My special guests today are Dr. Ben Beck, who's a research fellow here at Monash Uni, and Professor Peter Cameron, who is Divisional Director of the School of Public Health and Academic Director of Emergency and Trauma at Alfred Hospital. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thanks for having us. Now, you two have uh, co-authored, along with a few other people, um, some research on traumatic brain injuries here in Victoria. From my reading of it, there's some good news in there. Tell me about what you did and, and what you found. Yeah, so we looked at the incidence uh, of severe traumatic brain injury uh, over a nine-year study period. So we're looking at that from 2006 to 2014 um, using the population-based um, Victorian State Trauma Registry. Um, so we were looking at severe TBI that was defined as a uh, Glasgow Coma Scale score of 3 to 8, mm -hmm. as well as a um, AIS, so an abbreviated injury scale score of, of three or, or more. Um, and so the, the main finding, and as you suggested, the good news story out of this is that we're seeing a decline in severe TBI um, over the, the nine-year study period. And so it's declining at a rate of about 5% per year. Okay. I think probably the best news is, is the road trauma group. Right. Um, so they kind of, uh, the, the transport-related group, make up the, the majority of these events. Um, and so in the, the road trauma group, and specifically um, motor vehicles, um, which declined at 11% a year, as well as the cyclists, which declined at 12% per year. Wow. We're seeing some really, really nice numbers, and it's good to see those rates declining. We also saw declines in the pedestrian group um, and uh, the motorcycle group, although the decline was uh, non-significant in that motorcycle group. Okay. We hear a lot in the media, you know, there's a lot of sensational media attention paid to King Hit's intentional violence. What does your study tell us about the number of injuries that happened because of that and, and what's happened to that over the last nine years or so? Yeah, so we are um, seeing a reduction in those intentional events. Um, so that includes the interpersonal violence as well as self-harm events. Mm -hmm. uh, they do make up a very small proportion of the total number of severe TBI. Um, what sort of small proportion are we talking about? So the incidence um, of that group was around 0.6 uh, cases per 100,000 population. And 600% of the media attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, Whereas... that, that, that's it. that is a big issue, though. I mean, uh, if you actually look at the burden for you know, society, yeah. uh, you, know, you look at what's in the paper versus what's on the statistics, there, there's no sort of correlation at all. Yeah. And, and that's where our biggest opportunities are, is, is in reducing, even though we've had this massive reduction uh, with vehicles, there's still the biggest opportunity there uh, mm. for reduction. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I think the TAC Towards Zero um, campaign is, is on the money because we, you know, we've shown that these interventions work. And if you can reduce uh, by 20%, 30% the number of severe head injuries, yeah. uh, that's, that's huge in terms of the impact on society. Yeah, and the financial impact as well, I, well, I imagine. financial, but more, I mean, the, the, in some ways the money doesn't matter. I yeah. mean, you, you actually look at the impact of a family, of, you know, let's say a 20-year-old uh, with severe brain injury for the next, you know, 30, 40 years. Mm. The impact on the family is huge. Each one of those is sort of like a whole 30 or 40 people affected, uh, you know, a lifetime story. So let's talk about the little bit of bad news in the results. Um, falls. Tell us what you found there. So the falls group, so specifically the, the low falls, um, increased over the study period. Uh, and so that's obviously a concern um, that this predominated in the 65 plus age group. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about elderly low falls here that are increasing uh, at a rate that, that we need to be concerned about and it's something that we need to start looking at um, increasing efforts to prevent these incidents. So there's, there's a little bit of artefact in, in the older person falling data. Uh, if you go back 20, 30 years, an old person fell out of bed in the nursing home, yep. they wouldn't have come to hospital. No. Uh, and yet sometimes they have quite severe injuries, but the family, you know, decides they don't want to go any further with it and that's, you know, that's the way they're managed. The expectation now in society around that group is different, yes. uh, for better or for worse. And a lot of those patients come to the emergency department, they get scans, they show they have major head injuries, 
or, you know, and a whole lot of consequences follow. So it's a complicated area um, yeah. and much more difficult to target than something like, you know, if we didn't have any car accidents, there would be no uh, trauma. We could, um, you know, no uh, road trauma. Yep. The the um, with the older persons, though, it's 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 also about the social, the um, uh, medical conditions associated with them, and so it's it's not as straightforward in terms of the way we target prevention and, and reduce that uh, burden. Well, it edges into the debate about futility of care and all that sort of stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff, and the other thing to remember is we're using a lot more anticoagulants, so blood yep. thinners um, and and uh, antiplatelet agents. And again, if you've got them on board and you just happen to knock your head against something, all of a sudden you become a major trauma. Yeah. Are we talking about the novel anticoagulants? Well, the whole that? spectrum. Yeah. Like, if you go out there now and you go to an old person's home, you'll find half the people uh, on um, some sort of anticoagulant. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, again, it just puts them all at risk. Um, yeah. So it's a it's it's a very complicated area, and I think it needs it, it's more than just a sort of injury. You know, it's not a matter of wrapping them in cotton wool or something. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole um, structured program, including you know some of the uh, programs we've been running here, like uh, things like balance training, mm -hmm. um, uh, improvements in medications, um, so that they don't get uh, hypotension when they stand up. All these sorts of things, which you know, you don't traditionally think of as injury prevention. So what's the next step? What what needs to be done next, do you think? I think, obviously, we're seeing some really good um, progression and reductions in that road trauma group, but we're, we're still seeing an incidence that's reasonably high, and so we still need to work towards trying to reduce the incidence of severe TBI across all the groups that we've looked at. Yeah. So we've, we've, we've looked at, obviously, um, some of these reductions can be explained by both active and passive safety measures in vehicles, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, also, mass media campaigns, increased law enforcement. All of these issues are, are working in, in a positive direction, um, but we need continued efforts to try and continue to reduce the incidents in the road trauma group. And I think specifically the vulnerable road users. So. Mm -hmm the pedestrian cyclists and the motorcyclists we need to continue to try and identify strategies that are going to work so for example this might mean with cyclists increasing or improving infrastructure so having separated bicycle lanes yep. um, trying to reduce that risk of a cyclist interacting with a motor vehicle um, lower speed zones things like that are going to work within that road trauma space yeah uh, and i think uh, within the the uh, interpersonal violence uh, group, we still need to continue to work towards reducing risk associated with these events. And alcohol has been shown to be one of those yeah. um, risks. And so we need to work towards continuing trying to reduce uh, intoxication levels. Sure, I mean, the lockout laws in Sydney, I mean, if you talk to Gordian Fuldy, for example, at St Vincent's, he'll tell you they've been fantastic for stopping that sort of stuff. It's a controversial thing. What do you, what do you think of that for down here in Victoria? Well, it is controversial, and I'm not sure that their statistics uh, show that they're doing any better than us. Yeah. And as you'll see in the commentary in the paper, uh, there's a lot of people would think it's not such a bad thing to be able to go to a bar at 2 o'clock in the morning and have a good time. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't want to unnecessarily restrict people's liberty. You know, what you want to do, and this is why the research is important, mm. because you only want to restrict uh, individual liberties if they're definitely shown to make a difference. Yeah. Um, and 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 so this is a you know a particular example. I think I think there are things you can do around restricting uh, access to alcohol and uh, you know uh, street uh, violence um, by just some very you know straightforward. Um, corralling of people in certain areas and so you don't have to be draconian you can yep. just be have some common sense rules around it so the jury's still out on lockout definitely <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else from the paper that either of you want to highlight or bring up well, I think the main thing is a message of, of hope because uh, mm. I mean I think as a you know in the area of injury we tend to get a bit bogged down and say you know every year there's still hundreds of people dying and despite all these interventions but but actually, compared with virtually any other intervention we do in medicine, 
the interventions have had an incredible impact. Yeah. And, and this didn't measure the morbidity side of it. Uh, and, and if you look uh, at, at the improvements in that over time as well, yeah. uh, you're talking, you know, like the, the impact on society is huge. So I, I think it's a, a sort of reassurance we're on the right track and we should redouble our efforts to, to prevent, you know, to, to, to um, intervene. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you.